guess who's back? Neera Tandon. Now, if you don't know who Neera Tandon is, she's the president of the Center for American Progress. She was a huge Hillary Clinton ally during 2016, spent a lot of time online pushing back against progressives, against Bernie Sanders, and all because she was paid to do so. Now, before I get into uh, priming this story so you understand what I'm about to talk about, understand this is not really about Neera Tandon. This is about this line of argument and how we are going to, once again, hear a lot about this bullshit over the next two years. So just to uh, set it up here and, and give you context, right now, mainstream press really loves Beto O'Rourke. Beto O'Rourke, who lost to Ted Cruz in Texas for the Senate race, was, I think, a fine candidate for Texas. But for 2020, as somebody who lost to Ted Cruz, as somebody who is essentially Obama 2.0, I do not think Beto O'Rourke would be a good 2020 candidate. But I do think, and I completely understand, why the centrist slash moderate slash conservative wing of the Democratic Party would be for him. That said, luckily we have uh, some left-wing writers out there, very few, but they do exist, uh, writing about why Beto O'Rourke would not be a good 2020 candidate. So Liz Brunig put out her Washington Post op-ed titled, Why This Progressive Texan Can't Get Excited About Beto O'Rourke. And her comment here, Beto O'Rourke, it's a no from me, just one woman's opinion. Now, I'm not going to give you an entire breakdown of her uh, article here, but essentially she argues that while Beto O'Rourke is maybe good for Texas, he's very soft on the fossil fuel industry, he's not clear about Medicare for all, and he's a member of the New Democrat Coalition, which is a centrist caucus within the Democratic Party. Essentially saying Beto O'Rourke is just another Obama 2.0 or another Hillary Clinton. So this is somebody that is just another neoliberal, somebody that will easily give in to big money and corporations and sell out the American people. But what progressives want, what democratic socialists want, are actual solutions that look after the poor and the middle class, and Beto O'Rourke does not offer that. Now, look at how Neera Tandon replied. So this is her her reaction to this Beto O'Rourke piece in the Washington Post. Brunek's piece in the Post on Beto is just the latest attack by a supporter of Senator Sanders on Beto, joining Jelani, Jacobin, and Sirota feels a bit orchestrated, and clearly they are worried. Now, I'll get to the worried part in a second here, which, I mean, there is some truth to it, but uh, let me first talk about the orchestrated part. This is, this is Neera Tandon's worldview, because this is the world that she's in. She has engaged in orchestrated attacks on Bernie Sanders and on progressives. That's what she does. That's her whole job. So, Understand here, Bernie Sanders, AOC, the Justice Democrats, have taken no big money at all. These are people-run movements, meaning there is no big money behind the progressive movement to really push any sort of orchestrated attack. Now, do I think it would help us if we did have some sort of organization to do that? Yes. But in order to do that, there needs to be financial support, massive financial support. Now, there is a new group called Progressive International that was just launched this weekend that maybe looks to do something like that. But again, it's going to take a lot of money to be able to do this properly. Money that, I mean, who's going to give, what billionaire is going to give to organizations that want to tax them at much higher rates? It's just, it's the idea that there is some, you know, some cabal or some, some uh, you know, a, a massive billionaires or, or millionaires behind the scenes pushing these progressive messages out there is just absolutely ridiculous when the progressive message is antithetical to uh, concentrated wealth. Now, let me show you, though, why Neera Tandon thinks this way. So this was a great piece from the New Republic in 2016. How Neera Tandon works. Emails released by WikiLeaks reveal the maneuverings of a liberal think tank president and member of Hillary Clinton's inner circle. Now, one example used in that piece is this. Her work as a surrogate also involved muffling the voices of those who disagreed with Clinton or supported Bernie Sanders. In a March exchange with Democratic activist Zan Kothi about Zephyr Teachout, the progressive who challenged Andrew Cuomo in the 2013 Democratic primary, 
Uh, Tandon writes, I need Zephyr to not be a pain in the ass to Hillary. Do you think she would endorse Bernie? Do you have her contact info? Tandon then flags Podesta in the exchange, advising the campaign to contact Kirsten Gillibrand, the U.S. senator who took Clinton's seat in New York after she stepped down in 2008, to get Teach Out in line. Clinton's campaign manager, Robbie Mook, then informs Podesta, quote, Talk to Kirsten's chief. Looks like she's already expressed support for Bernie. See below. But he thinks but he thinks they can keep her from being too vocal. So this is one of many examples in that article, which I will link below the video if you want to go and read it, to get an idea of who, if you don't already know, who Neera Tandon is. So this is her world. She engages in orchestrated attacks against her opponents. So she assumes that everyone else is doing that. When, look, as I said, there is no big money backing us to be able to do that. I'm living off patron money and YouTube ads. And you know what? It's not going too well. <laughs> I need a little more. So this is the reality for uh, progressives. We actually care about the issues. And in the process, we have to suffer a little bit because the money ain't here. Now, let me show you uh, Liz Brunig's response to uh, Neera Tandon, which is also fantastic. Not orchestrated. We're actually not great at the behind-the-scenes listserv stuff, though maybe we should become so. And uh, I'm absolutely afraid of getting another Dem in there who'll kiss up to Wall Street, hand health care back to private insurers, and punt on student debt. So just a little clarity there. Listserv essentially means uh, blasting email lists. So this, again, takes some sort of infrastructure to do. Now, could somebody come in and do that, you know, voluntarily or with, for very little money? Yeah, potentially, and that would be great, but it doesn't really exist right now. So unless Progressive, uh, Progressive International, if, if that's what their aim is or part of their aim, then maybe that'd be good, but that, does, that doesn't exist right now. So this is not like some big money-backed uh, progressive organization try, trying to uh, ensure that everybody has the same line out there. That's not what happens. We look at these issues and we discuss them based on how we see them. So progressives, democratic socialists often do think alike because we have the same policy solutions for these issues. Now, let me show you um, another reaction here that I liked. This is from uh, Dylan Matthews, senior correspondent at uh, Vox.com. The establishment lineup behind Beto is so fascinating. I guess we're all really committed to just rerunning the 2016 primaries with him as Hillary. Exactly. And look, the reality is, if it wasn't Beto, it would be Biden or Kamala Harris or somebody else. They're going to use whoever they can until there is nobody left. So understand, this is just now the beginning of the attacks against Bernie Sanders. This this sort of thing is going to continue happening. So just be ready for it and be ready to stand behind the progressive movement and get involved. 